How do you conduct linear regression and then evaluate if your model is statistically significant? Today, we are going to go over using an F-test with simple linear regression. My name is Jacob from Intrepid ProtoWorks. Today, we are going to extend what we did last week with simple linear regression by adding in an F-test. We'll go ahead and start off with our imports. And then we will do the gamma function, the F distribution probability density function, and then we will get a P value from that. We'll do those three functions. We've done this in a number of videos already. So I'll speed through that. We do include all the code needed to do the task in here. We're not skipping over anything, but if you want a better breakdown, make sure to reference some of our previous videos. So we're starting off with a series of imports, we're importing math, scipy, dot integrate from decimal, we're importing decimal and get context, CSV, random matplotlib.py plot as PLT. We're using BMH as our style, and we're setting the number of significant figures for decimal to 100 using get context. Dot prep. We'll define get mean, just returning the sum of the list that we passed it divided by the length of the list that we passed it. We're then going to write out our gamma function. If you need to pause to take this down, go ahead and do so. And this is something that has been in a number of videos recently. So if you need a more detailed breakdown reference, those next we'll go ahead and do our probability distribution function for the F distribution or better breakdown this. Go ahead and take a look at our video on the F distribution function. The last function we need to do before I go into the linear regression is to just get a P value from an F value. Again, you can reference our video on the F distribution function for this. So now we're on to the main function for this tutorial. That is our simple linear regression. It's uh, mostly the same as last time, and I'll blaze over the parts that are the same, and then I'll be sure to point out what's different. The first part that is different is that we're going to be also compiling all of the Y values into to its own list called Y. This is needed so we can compare our model, our trend line to the actual data. And in our loop, we will fill this Y list with each of our Y values. From there, the for loop finishes the same way as it did in our previous video on simple linear regression. We then do our regression line using our X min, X max, our slope, our intercept, our R squared, our min calc Y and our max calc Y, and then put that all into our regression line, just the same as we did in our previous video. With all that out of the way, we can go ahead and move on to calculating what we need to be able to do an F test. So what we need to calculate is the sum of squares error for the fitted model and the sum of squares error for the reduced model as well as some degrees of freedom. We'll call our sum of squares error for the fitted model, or SSEF, and our sum of squares error for the reduced model, or SSER. So we'll define our empty variables for our sums of squares, SSEF equals zero, SSER equals zero. And we'll go ahead and open up a loop. We'll say for row in our data, our fitted Y is our intercept plus our slope times our X value for that row. Our reduced y is just equal to our intercept. The SSEF will add the difference between our fitted y and our actual y and square that. Our SSER will add the difference or will square the difference between our y and our reduced y, the, just the intercept, and square that. We will then do the degrees of freedom for our reduced model, the degrees of freedom for our full model, and then the degrees of freedom for our factors. We now have all the parts needed to go ahead and do our F test or calculate our F ratio. So we're going to do it a little bit different rather than calculating the mean squares intermediate. We're just going to do everything in one calculation this time. And the reason for this is I think in the case, case of regression, just looking at the sums of squares can make a little bit more sense. You're entitled, entitled to disagree with me on that. If you do, go ahead and toss in Y down in the comments below. So we'll go ahead and toss in a couple of sets of parentheses. We'll say our sums of squares for our reduced model minus our sums of squares for the fitted model. So the difference between that divided by the degrees of freedom for our reduced model minus degrees of freedom of our fitted model. And then all of that will be divided by the sums of squares of our fitted model divided by the degrees of freedom of our fitted model or the mean square of our fitted model. Then we'll go ahead and round all that to four decimal places. And that way we'll go ahead and do a significance test using the same methods that we've been doing before. We'll say and then we'll put in for the get uh, P from F, we'll say our F, our degrees of freedom for our factors and our degrees of freedom for our fitted model. 
because that is what we're evaluating. The rest of the significance test is the same as we've done in previous videos. And then lastly, we need our return statement. We're going to return a whole bunch of stuff. So our regression line, R squared, slope, our intercept, move down to another line. Our F, our P, our significance, our degrees of freedom for our factors, and our degrees of freedom for our fitted model. You could probably put this into a list, I just chose not to this time. And with that, we are ready to go ahead and code an example and how to process the data to use the tools we've made, and then go ahead and troubleshoot any issues that might have cropped up while writing this out. We'll start with just our standard. We'll define an empty list called dataset. We will open up our CSV file containing our data, and then we'll go through and filter out NA responses as well as our header. We'll also filter out anybody who did not report an income or had a negative income for the year of 2017. Now, this time, rather than looking at age and trying to correlate that with income, we're going to look at education level and try to correlate that. So we'll say our education is our X and our income is our Y, and we'll append it to our data set, the education level and the income each time. So that organizes our data. For the sake of making this data set look a little bit more similar to what you might be experiencing, we're going to go ahead and sample from this data set. We'll say our number of subjects is equal to 100, and our data sample equals random.sample, and then our data set and our number of subjects. We'll go ahead and define our alpha as equal to 0 0.05, and we'll say get p is true, make ourselves some more space. We'll then just go ahead and grab our return statement and then we'll just paste it in and then set that equal to simple linear regression data alpha get p and we will go ahead and say data sample and just get rid of the equals true. We're going to make ourselves some more space and start processing our output. A lot of this is going to be similar to last week but we're going to go ahead and add an if statement that will look at if significance was true or not. Similar to last week we'll print our r squared or p or f uh, a statement for the impact, except the education this time, of each change in a level of our education. We'll state our model that we calculated, and then the difference will be that we will state if our model was significant. So if significance is true, we'll say the model was significant at our alpha, where our F or degrees of freedom equals our P. And we'll just put that in with a format statement, and then we'll follow up with an else statement. The else statement is going to be exactly the same other than the statement which gives us the outcome will state that it was not significant at our alpha. And then lastly, we will go ahead and plot our data. This is exactly the same as what we did last week. So if you want a better breakdown of that, go ahead and reference our video from last week. So we're just going to go ahead and speed through this really fast. If you want the code, it will be up on the GitHub. We are now ready to configure and run in a new dedicated console. Looks like we added an extra indent. Fix that. We have an extra equal sign here. Save and run one more time. And we have results. The results are all numbers which make sense. And predictably, education has a pretty substantive impact on income. We'll go ahead and fix another little typo in our output. And I think we have everything working the way we want. Go ahead and bring the results onto the screen real quick so we can take a look at our graph. There's lots of ways you can change the way this looks. Uh, to suit whatever context you need to use it in. You can change all the, you can change everything. We've done videos on how to work with graphs in the past. Next week, we will look at doing multiple uh, linear regression. And so in other words, looking at multiple variables in our model. And that will probably wrap up most of what we're going to do for regression, at least in the short term. I decided I'm going to go ahead and continue the stats series, but rather than going over it in the way we have, I'm going to just do little things, maybe go back and do a, revised tutorial on how to do certain things that we've done before. And we'll just continue checking through it. We're probably going to be introducing some more series here soon as well that relates to the field of human factors, because there's a lot more to this than just, uh, than just statistics. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them down below. If you have any comments, those are welcome as well. Uh, the code will be available on the GitHub. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.